Okay, guys. Um, today we are going to be working on this BMW behind me. It is uh, here because of uh, one of my regular customers recently purchased it and was told that it needed an engine. Um, as far as year make model, I believe it's a 14 BMW 650. Uh, it has an N63 engine. Um, and it does start, it cranks, starts, runs, but it runs very, very bad. Um, if it runs, it'll it'll run for a little bit and stall. Um, it's just very, very crappy running. Obviously, I did a um, complete scan and as far as what we found with that, Um, on this was now a lot of these I uh, did set myself during testing this vehicle actually let me get you a shot of it all um, on this generation be uh, they went to two DMEs so here's one here's two um, basically each one controls each bank um, bank one is here bank two is here and um, as far as trouble codes here's where we start to get into DME2 and the one code that stood out for me which is where the uh, path is gonna lead us down to is this guy here so uh, DME2 130F21 exhaust camshaft 2 Angle deviation with respect to crankshaft out of tolerance. So that's basically a very nicely put way of saying um, you're out of time on camshaft 2 for exhaust. Uh, so bank 2 exhaust camshaft out of time. So that's going to be this side of the engine here. Um, supposedly out of time. But before deciding to go on ahead with attempting to do or find out what's wrong with timing, I always like to make sure that it is at least worth attempting to go ahead and repair and rectify the timing issue by making sure that there is no uh, internal engine damage, i.e. basically bent valves or uh, you know cracked pistons or something mechanically uh, crazy to the point that you don't need to bother trying to fix the timing uh, and the way that I do that uh, and I do this quite often is um, you go in cylinder and crank it over um, doesn't have to run just crank over and you want to be able to see what's going on in there and mainly you're wanting to see valve activity and that there is sealing and opening on both intake and exhaust you being that you have a V you can always compare known good to the supposed bad and find out what is at a time compared to the known good with both captures um, if you just simply have an inline um, then it's just just you check all all cylinders and then on all of them I always check all cylinders to make sure you don't have, say, three good and a fourth one that tapped the intake valve or something. Um, but it's not usually the case. But always cover your behind by checking everything and don't assume because one's good, the rest are good. No. Check all of them before you decide to go forward with, instead of engine replacement, uh, to do timing. So, not sure if this will crank because of battery maybe get you a shot what it sort of runs like or sounds like so um, as you can see it actually does run 
there's no crazy like engine knocking, raw knock, uh, um, just you smell a lot of raw fuel. Yes, I know that is missing big crankcase uh, uh, leak there, but trust me, that that uh, close makes no difference. Um, but like I said, it runs, runs real rough, and no engine mechanical crazy sounds going on so this is why I decided to tell him we can possibly go ahead and repair it by redoing the timing as long as we check make sure all those valves are good okay so I'm all set up with the scope got two spark plugs removed both from the front cylinders of each bank uh, running with the two channels simultaneously got all injectors uh, unplugged so we're just going to do a cranking uh, measurement for now I doubt that I'm going to need to have it be running um, but um, this is just like I said the basic way that I go about it especially with a known good bank I will do a cranking simultaneous with two transducers and then analyze the uh, waveform and check for the valve timing <laughs> Um, it even sounds uh, terrible when cranking. Okay. Um, and basically, uh, like I said, I have looked at this before, and what is going on is it's when it starts runs and idles and idles rough. It's only running on bank one. This side is so far out that it doesn't contribute to it running and idling so that is why you hear such a offset uh, sound when cranking basically it's skipping and that side's not contributing even though it's in the rotation uh, there was that like dead sound between each other high sound if that makes sense because this hits that doesn't this hits that doesn't so on so forth so it's only running on that Okay, so I'm going to go over the uh, two quick captures that I took uh, bank to bank, or the only two that I found that I have saved, um, and show you what I used or how I went about uh, looking at this to be able to decide on whether we have a good cylinder head or not. Um, first things first, on this capture that I'm showing you here, Blue trace is um, bank one. Yeah, bank one. Red trace is bank two, the uh, bank that's out of time. Right off the bat, they look both just look totally funky and weird. Um, I personally, up to this point, still had not done. An end cylinder on an N63. I didn't know what to expect as far as on the good bank, bank one, and obviously bank two. I was only looking for um, the ability to change pressure, which on bank one, I don't know again what it's supposed to look like. I do know that this N63 is the second generation that does have Valvetronics in the cylinder head for intake. Um, I do believe that some of this that we are seeing that I'm not used to seeing is due to Valvetronic activity. Um, whether it's true or not I don't know. I have not looked at one known good yet. Even though it is the one that contributes and that the car runs off of. I don't know if that's 100% correct, but I do know Valtronic during cranking can look a little weird. And um, 
Um, I'm wondering if this is what I'm seeing. Obviously, I'm not too concerned with Bank 1. My concern is with Bank 2 to see if we have any valves that are bent. And the way you go about it, and this is a, a zoomed out view, which you can tell clearly there's activity being done. This is um, a little bit in more detail that I've got here. What you want to look for is um, a change in pressure. Basically, you want to you want to be able to build pressure, which means both valves do close, can close, and seal when they close, at least enough to build pressure. That's the first thing you want to look at, the ability to build pressure. That means both valves will seal. That means it's not bent and off the seat. The other thing is you want to see pressure release, which we clearly have here. Um, and then again, here's a pressure build and another pressure release and another pressure build. Although it's hard to tell which area is what, meaning where is T, the, the supposed point of intake valve closing for TDC buildup. Um, what it ended up being on this one, uh, this is the TDC or intake valve closing here, uh, your TDC point, and let me get the blue one out of the way and then what happens here so TDC to TDC here I'll put I'm um, setting up rulers obviously I don't know where the true peak point is but I am picking right at that cutoff point which um, basically you start you close the intake valve pistons going up clearly building pressure because both valves are closed and as the, in, the piston's still going up all of a sudden you've got a sharp abrupt super sharp straight down abrupt drop in pressure at that point is where the exhaust valve opens, and then you're exposed to atmospheric pressure and then you've got a sharp uh, shoot in uprising pressure uh, that's after 180 right at the 180 point which means that's your piston changing direction pistons traveling up um, your exhaust valve closes right at that point or just if you zoom just just before um, and now you're building pressure because the intake valve's closed, your exhaust valve's closed, and the piston's traveling up. And then again, across your 360, you've got a, a, another crazy, abrupt, sharp drop in pressure. At that point, the intake valve's open. And then you travel over until you start over again and the intake valve closes and it closes piston travels up build pressure the fact that I saw the ability to hold pressure build pressure release pressure and cycle that over and over I know 100 percent that this cylinders valves are not bent and off the seat when closed and are able to seal, move, and operate. The fact that we're seeing what we're seeing is because the cam timing for the exhaust is super advanced and so far advanced that it, the engine cannot run and is why this bank doesn't contribute. Now, you have to do this on all four cylinders on that bank to make sure you see the same picture you don't want to sell a 
timing job if you don't know if all cylinders are able to seal and um, release pressure. Wanted to kind of show as far as where I'm at. Um, I've got the crank timing tool located in its um, locked position where they want you to lock it. So that is the point where everything gets timed. It's um, what they call 150 degrees before number one top dead center, which bank one, cylinder one is up in the front. And what they say to look at or where you should theoretically be is your cams with a quick visualization these flat spots should be facing up on both cams which these are they're definitely in that general area um, and then this was bank 2 the side that was throwing the trouble codes and that was not contributing if you look at the intake cam we do have the flat spot facing up this way and then if you move over to the exhaust cam you can see it is definitely not quote unquote clocked correctly the flat spot is not where it should be which is this this face of it should be facing up um, so it is too far advanced it is out of time um, what I believe has gone on is this phaser uh, to have internally come apart or not not being correctly securing in the correct position as far as it can uh, and what I did notice compared to the other ones you can see the uh, cap for it right there looks like it's a little bit lifted off of its face um, I'm wondering or, or whatever maybe came apart kind of pushed that cap off a little bit and it's what I had noticed when I was spinning the engine over just checking and checking and kind of just comparing it to the other side so it's more snug to the face of the gear compared to how this one seems to be lifted off and coming off of the face um, so it's giving me a little bit more of a good uh, confidence saying that what we had initially thought of is that the, the, the gear phaser, whatever you want to call it, had failed. Throwing the timing off and it not being the actual chain stretch issue or uh, something, something bad. And we did know that the cam was rotating and spinning just at the wrong time. And I believe that guy is the problem. So we're out of time here. Um, what I've got to do is break break the bolts loose. This is going to get removed, obviously, and replaced. Um, but then we'll rotate this clock it the correct way. We'll put the jigs, the locks on, um, and then tighten everything up in the correct position. And like I said, we've got... Brand new phaser. So we'll put that one on, and we've got, like I said, the four bolts along with your miscellaneous gaskets and um, so on and so forth. Okay, so I wanted to get you a quick shot of after torquing the um, cam gears all to spec and spinning it and 
checking if the cam blocks line up and they do I've got it jigged up right now so uh, after I torqued it I spun it around the pin lines up and here is my first uh, uh, my bank one cam jig or block whatever you want to call it it's in there without any gaps and here is the bank two and it lines up so everything did come uh, line up properly and uh, it spins fine no issues at this point it is time to assemble everything and um, get it running and checking it over okay so I finally got this put together it's been it's been a while it's been a long journey uh, just cuz first time dealing with having to time one of these and um, basically bringing it back to life um, from being out of time so again everything up to this point is put back together uh, not a hundred percent everything secure but all good enough to be able to run uh, to crank it start it and run it and um, hopefully uh, with no issues um, I off camera already cranked it over um, without any coils or fuel injectors plugged in it's just the way I do it. anytime I do an engine or timing head work anything I'll crank it over with if I can avoid fuel and spark um, obviously always spark but injectors not always feasible but on on this one I was able to plug everything crank it over I just like to get the motor spinning get the oil pump going get the timing change everything you know rotating uh, and make sure no funky noises occur which was fine and dandy I've plugged everything in as far as coil and uh, injectors so we'll um, go ahead and crank it Battery's gonna need to be charged up. But because of that, I'm gonna use a second jump box. I don't want to run into any issues cranking and not have enough power. So Sounds good. Start to run. Brought back to life. No weird noises. We did get two new injectors. Check for fuel leaks, make sure. Everything is good. Uh, <laughs> and we got a smoke show going on. Yeah. Well, I'm sure with uh, how far timing was off at the uh, there's a lot of crap in the exhaust, especially on uh, this thing. So, there it is. It's up running. It's alive. 
and um, not sure if I'll get any more captures on this. Uh, I'm gonna let this run outside and then um, just button it all up. Okay, so this one is finally all done. Got it running, I said yesterday. Put back everything on it, all, all that I could find. The only thing missing was the engine cover, but everything else is there. It's put back together, and currently I am bleeding the uh, coolant system for the uh, turbocharger intercooler uh, system. The uh, conventional coolant systems here, this is separate. Same coolant, but separate isolated systems. And not sure if you can hear, but the uh, electric pump for that system is running right now. Um, other than that, everything seems to be good on it. Um, runs, drives, just checking little minor things, topping everything off. But uh, that's all that this one ended up needing was just the... Uh, timing gear replacement and resetting the timing and no valves did touch and get bent and uh, we were able to like I said bring this one back up to life and operational so uh, customer is happy he will be picking up here soon and that's all on this one